Hello, Lizzie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make Madalena, uh, one of my new patterns. And it's actually a great size tote bag with a boxy bottom there, you can see, but also inside it's absolutely jam-packed with features. Nice handles, not, not too long, not too short, so you can put it over your shoulder if you want to. But inside, I'm going to show you hopefully an angle there. <laughs> You've got a very large zippy pocket that goes from side to side um, and almost to the depth of the bag. So that's going to take a lot of things. It's going to take your iPads and your, all your devices. And you've also got side pockets as well. Honestly, it looks a bit of a mess there. Look, that's a bit better. So you've got those side pockets as well. Now, I've done that deliberately so you can see those because they're quite big. I, I'm trying to get this so you can see. Um, and it's got that zip pocket in the middle and then another pocket the other side. Now, you could divide those pockets up. So you've got two smaller pockets, one side and a big pocket the other side. I always leave that sort of finer detail to you but basically that's what we've got so it's a big big tote bag with that lovely big zipper pocket in the center there for security maybe this is the bag that you're going to take shopping with you maybe it's the bag that you're going to take to the beach um, on holiday definitely on holiday um, it's perfect for taking all your swimming gear in and all your bits and bobs in that you need for the beach um, without a shadow of a doubt um, but it's also great for shopping um, it's a it's a good size it's a good size and you, you need quite a bit of fabric for it um, which on first glance you think oh, I probably don't but you do because of all the pockets and I've lined every single pocket as well I mean again you don't have to that's always your option to change things up I just give you the basics and if you wanted to you could put a pocket on the front too but I don't think it's necessary with all the pockets that we've got inside so like I said two nice long carry handles not too long not too short um, and like I say inside there we go you can see all the the pockets they probably need stuffing out with things now with this one all the the lining and the pockets are all made with the same fabric and that will take a meter because of the amount of cutting you're going to do um, and then you've got the lining of those pockets which is just your regular half a meter is fine the one I'm going to make has a contrasting fabric on the pockets so the lining is one color the pockets are different and that's only because I only had a half a meter of each so I, I kind of adapted it so you'll see how that looks at the end hopefully so this is a Madalena sorry Madalena and she's a download on my website Lizzie curtis.com full pattern instructions pictures all that sort of thing and this lovely video to help you stitch her together but she's actually quite an easy make and in my sort of star rating so at the top of the pattern it will say how many sewing machines um, it's worth I do think it's a three star because we've got two zips to put in and all the pockets so it's um, it's a little little bit more complicated um, and also I've used foam and for those people that know me you know I don't particularly like foam but for this particular bag it needed it so I couldn't skimp but if you wanted to use wadding or batting something a bit softer maybe just a stabilizer then you do that um, but but certainly in my head this needed to be foam because then it's obviously you can see it stands up on its own beautifully so there we are so let's get going so we've got quite a few preliminary stages to go through to get to the point where we can put the bag together. So we've got pockets to make, we've got the two side pockets to make up, we've got the centre pocket to make up with a zip, we've also obviously got to put the whole bag together with a zip as well. It's actually a lot easier than normal so you'll think oh gosh that's a lot of stitching and sewing it's complicated. It really isn't. So um, the lining, I chose this um, sort of off pink, off white, off white, off sort of dusky pink colour because it goes with my fabric. You can see my fabric there. Um, but then, like I say, when I came to do the pockets, um, half a metre was definitely enough, not enough to do the whole lot. So I've chosen to use a grey, same design, but a grey. And I think actually it's going to look quite nice. Plus it's inside the bag. So it's my choice, isn't it? So the first thing we're going to do, and I'll, I'll take some of these bits and pieces away so we don't get over complicated. You've got two pieces for your um, pocket, um, two outer pieces, okay? And then you've got two lining pieces. Now I've used a white on white. You might want to use maybe just a muslin or a calico. It doesn't have to be anything posh. And to be honest, 
they don't have to be lined but I was kind of wanting it to be a rather special bag and I think by lining it all it's kind of gone that way so I put right sides together on both pieces so if you can have a look at that difficult to see white on white you'll have to trust me but there we are so right sides together and we're going to stitch all the way around leave a turning gap on one of the long edges of about four inches uh, for turning through and making this look gorgeous so let's bring the machine in and we'll keep keep the machine there for the for the duration of the video I'll just get it positioned nicely so you can see and just make sure it's switched on make sure we've got the foot control and let's get going so it's a quarter of inch seam allowance um, I toyed with the idea of making it a half an inch or a centimetre but it mm, doesn't really need it so I'm just going to stick to my quarter inch So of course you can pin all these pieces together and um, for speed I'll not do that but I'm sure you can pause the video now and pin all your pieces together and so we're coming back on that last little bit there so I'll just stop stitching there little back stitch because that then because we're going to turn it through it's going to take a little bit of pressure so again we'll just go around the second one Okay, so I've uh, stitched around both pockets, I'm just popping my iron on there. And this really does make quite a difference when you turn these through and iron them because it makes them really neat. Now you can, of course, and I'll get my scissors, cut these corners off so you get a bit of a more sh sort of sharper point when you turn through um, and have a blunt turning tool handy to poke those corners out and uh, while my iron is heating up this is a good little job to do so just snip these off there we go and I've got my trusty very posh chop chopstick here turn them through now you might find that um, the sort of blunted end of a scissor so in other words if you hold your scissors together that's it's not too sharp a point to be able to get into the corners and as long as you don't open those scissors up or push too hard actually they're, they're quite a good thing to use but I'll be really good and use my my little chopstick here uh, it doesn't quite get into the corners because it's got a rounded point but really, this is going to be down to how pedantic you are at your corners. <laughs> It'll be a, a test of your confidence and whether you're so fussy. I'm not fussy. I'm just grateful that I've got a corner. <laughs> but you know what? If you're a new stitcher and you're watching this and you think, oh my gosh, <gasps> this looks so complicated and I'm not sure I can cope it's only straight lines and um, if you follow the video you'll be absolutely fine and don't forget to ask questions we like questions so bring my ironing mat in and my iron 
Now you'll find that when you stitch it'll it'll be curvy. You can see how those sides are curvy. So just make sure you push them out, excuse me, and get them so they're nice and straight because when you stitch this onto your bag it'll um It'll show, it'll show that they're curvy. I mean, to be honest, they're going on the inside. Only you or the recipient of your bag is going to see them. Um, yep. But pressing, and ta just taking your time on all of these steps is really important. Right, so when we get to the part where we've got the turning gap, let me show you that way can see the turning gap is sticking out just fold those in follow the quarter inch uh, seam guide if you like fold those in iron them and they're going to go on the bottom of the pocket when we stitch it on and that way those raw edges those folded edges are going to be caught so just fold one little piece back give it a press fold the other piece back give it a press and then just pull from either side and that should then line that up so let's have a look yeah I'm happy with that so that's it turned through obviously our turning gap is here and if you want to just for reference pop a pin in to make sure you know that's the bottom so we'll do the same with the other one. So I've made my two pockets, I've pressed them and now it's just a case of stitching them onto our bag and this is the lining okay. Now can you see I've already cut my boxed corners in preparation for a little bit later. Now you can do that now or you can do that later um, but at some point you will have to cut off that, uh, that those two squares either side of your lining piece. So what you need to do is measure three and a half inches down from your the top. So if we look at it if we look at it like that, I'll put it on sideways. So there's the bottom of our bag here. There's the top of the bag here. And we're going to measure down three inches from that top part there. And that's where our pocket placement's going to go. So I'll take my trusty tape measure. Now, the other thing is obviously to get it central. So I'm just going to fold my lining in half and I'm going, going to finger press a central line. And this is really nice fabric. It's already got a crinkle in it. so excuse me I can just about see my crease line so along that crease line that's why I put the center of my pocket so I'm going to do the same with my pocket I'll take that pin out for a moment so I'm just literally folding it in half and giving it a crease you could put the iron on it if you want um, you don't want a permanent crease though so you've just got to be aware of that so I've got my crease line there and I'm going to put it up to the crease line of my my lining now you're not going to be able to see this terribly well but just trust me there's a crease line going across here and across my pocket and I'm lining those up okay now that's I haven't measured that yet I just know that the pocket is central to my lining but I'm going to measure three and a half inches down <laughs> and that was that was absolutely apart from a millimetre inches millimeters we're absolutely spot on so what I need to do is get my pins measure from the end of the pocket I'm going to try and turn it so you can see let's do it this way in fact let's do it on the side view because that's much easier so there's the, the top that's um, where the zip's going to go in eventually and obviously that this is the top of my pocket and all I want to do is to make sure that my there's a crease there. I know you're not going to be able to see that, but you've got to trust me on that. And there's a crease in my pocket there and I've got those lined up. So all I'm going to do is measure three and a half inches from one side. And I'm just going to bring that up with my pin and pop a pin in. That I know that's now straight. You can see that my tape measure is showing that. And then on the end, I'm also measuring three inches in and just bringing my pocket down to fit in there. So let me pop a pin in there. There we go. Make sure I've got the turning gap at the bottom still. I kept my pin there. So let's just pop that back in. 
so it's three and a half inches there we go you can see that now so each end has been measured I know that's central because of my crease line each end has been measured three and a half inches down and you can see now that my pocket is beautifully positioned um, so we're going to we're going to just top stitch all the way around just so one two three sides I'm going to make sure I really go um, back, back a nice few back stitches there just to make sure that's really strong and if you wanted to you can you could stitch down here as well to make that a double pocket because this is quite a roomy pocket um, but it's, it's up to you. It depends what you think you're going to use this for as to whether you think that it's going to need that piece there. You could pop your phone in one side and maybe um, your partner's phone in that side or maybe some treats in there or tickets or something like that. But you, they're really nice, good size pockets. So we're now going to top stitch all the way around and I'll go ahead and do the second one and I'll come back to you. So I've stitched both pockets on and with this pocket I've actually done what I said that you could do and I've stitched down the middle that's given me two separated pockets there which I think I'll just just on one side I don't need to do both so both of those have been done now so you can see the other one put on there and do you see how the grey fabric is quite complementary especially when you look at the outer fabric it all works together so you can decide now whether you're going to do a meter where it's all the same or half a meter of two contrasting fabrics and it's entirely up to you but I, I think I, I like how it looks so those are my two um, lining pieces. Now one of these I'm going to attach the zip pocket to. So I'm going to put that just to one side over here. Doesn't matter which one. And, and this one I'll put to one side. So for the zipped pocket, again, you're going to cut your pieces out as per the pattern. And you're going to get two outer pieces, two lining pieces. And like I said before, you don't have to line it, but it, it really does make it very smart. Um, so I'm sticking to the plan. Um, I've also got um, a matching zipper for this um, particular outside fabric there, the grey. So I've got a grey zip. Um, you could do a pink zip, you could do a contrasting zip. Um, certainly for the outer bag, I'm picking up that mustard colour that's in the main fabric. We can, we, we'll have a look again at soon. Um, so I'm going to put this grey zip in. Now I've in the instructions it says to cut it a lot lot longer than the actual width of your piece of fabric and that's because we can get that little, naughty little slider out of the way and it just keeps everything a sort of kind of easier for you to stitch basically so I've kind of moved it right down to the end there I use zips on a roll from crafters companion their color range is fantastic the quality of their, their zips are superb um, and I don't get paid to tell you that so um, what I'm going to do now is to change my my thread color over oh, not my thread cover I'm going to change my zipper foot over so I'm taking off my regular quarter inch foot, putting my zipper foot on. Um, and it, it really is worth using a zipper foot. But because we've got the slider out of the way, it's not going to cause you any issues. It's not going to get in the way. In fact, a zipper foot really helps you to get the zip in place. So what you're going to do is you've got the right side of the zip facing you. Okay, well you can see the teeth quite easily. If we took that, turned that over, you actually can't see the, the teeth at all. So you're looking at the teeth of the zip and you're going to put the outer fabric right sides down onto your zipper tape. Okay, so um, if I put it down and then I'll show you on the side view what it looks like. And there's some good pictures in the instructions for that. So look, there we are. You can see the zip slider there. You can see that that's the right side of my fabric. And so we're popping it down right sides together. Right side, right side, okay, together. Now with the lining, that's gonna go right side facing up as well. So if I just get a piece, let's get those bits and bobs out of the way. Um, make sure that it's the right way. With white on white, sometimes it's quite tricky. So. Oh, that's actually that's showing it quite well. So this is the right side of my lining fabric and that's going to go like that. We're going to make a sandwich. So the sandwich is right side of your lining facing up, 
right side of your outer facing down and the right side of your zipper showing like that that is your sandwich and uh, sometimes I'll do you um, stitch the outer on first and then add the lining but because this is a nice simple project I'm doing both at the same time um, <clears throat> nothing complicated about this and because we have moved that slider right out of the way super easy super easy now of course you can pin all this of course please do uh, but for speed I, I won't so we're putting the zipper in the long edge of both pieces now you'll find that your zipper foot will hug your zipper teeth and you won't hop over the edge of your zipper teeth it just it just well you'd have to do something quite dramatic to get that to happen not sure what but i know you can't see the zip i appreciate that trust me it always works now the other thing and this has happened here which is quite interesting is that the top layer will pretty much always move um, and I, the reason for that is because I haven't pinned mine. If you pin yours or use clips, you'll find that, and I'm going to show you on the side, it's actually it's moved quite a lot. This is quite, a, it's like a crepe really. It's quite stretchy and I think it's stretched all the way across. I mean, that is extreme. That is extreme. But if you, if you were to pin all of these layers together or clip them all together, you, you would find that doesn't happen, okay? It's just because I'm trying to be super duper quick for you. But I, what I will do is I'll just trim that down and I won't trim all the way along um, at that. I'm going to just sort of angle it off. So I'm cutting a sort of a dart, if you like. So I'm just, let me show you, because it's important you see, I'm just trimming that away because eventually it'll all, it'll all work out. So that's one side of my zipper in place. So if we fold that all back on itself, there we go. That's what it looks like. And do do give that an iron. I'll I'll do I'll give it an iron when I put the other side on. And of course you can you're going to top stitch this. So you can tie the top stitch it now, uh, which let's do that. Or you can put the other side in and then top stitch both pieces at the same time. Um, I think just because I like things to be neat, I'm going to give that an iron. So. Let's get the iron in. <clears throat> um, if you don't iron, you might find that your lining um, sort of creeps up and you might catch that. In You want it to be the same sort of uh, depth, if you like. When you pull those two pieces together, you want the lining and the outer to be the same depth. Um, if you catch the lining, then it, it won't... Uh, it won't sit right so just give that a nice press does make a difference lovely just get those edges together the bottom edges together give that a little tug and that'll bring all the layers together nicely um, I would just be a careful if you're using a real contrasting thread on the top. So, for instance, if this if you're using a dark grey or a black or something like that or whatever, um, you will notice that you will see that on the lining. So you need to keep that super neat. So let's. Um, yeah, I think that's what happened. I think it's probably a little, a little bit stretchy. It's a little bit, I'll keep that on because we can do the other side. It's a little bit crepey. It's nice. It's French actually. Anyway, let's just top stitch that. And again, as you're going along, just make sure that these bottom edges are sitting together. You can pin it if you want. So pin all those layers so they stay exactly where you want them to be and your top stitching should only be an eighth of an inch please don't make it any bigger okay so that's our one of our sides on and top stitched and there's the lining on the other side so we're going to do exactly the same 
so right side of the zip showing right side of my outer fabric facing down I'm tempted to pin now because it's stretched but I can be forgiven I'm sure and then the right side of our lining fabric underneath so when I look at my layer forget about the middle one because that's obviously the one you've just stitched forget about that so you've got the again you've got the outside fabric facing down there's your right side of your zip there you can see the teeth and the right side of your lining which shows beautifully on camera facing up and and you can see that goes right sides together <clears throat> so we'll just stitch that in place so I'm going to be super cautious of the fact that that stretch so I'm going to be very aware of that as I go along but but please please pin don't do as I do <laughs> it really wants to shift it really wants to shift I'm gonna have to let it do its own thing I think um, and I was talking to somebody the other day about a zipper walking foot which is exactly what this needs and I think some machines do have them I've never come across one myself but what a good idea I'm just going to have to really play hard with this one this is really naughty <laughs> Right, got a few little bits there that I'm not happy about, but let's just carry on. So I just want to trim this to size again. I mean, to be honest, it doesn't matter because we're going to trim it off anyway in a set when we do um, when we put it into the bag. But I will just sort of try and keep that neat. There we are. So same again. We've put our zipper in, so our lining. And our outer looks like that. Can you see that zipped going down the centre? If I turn it around, there's our lining. So we're just going to give that a quick press. I did keep the iron on, so that's handy. So we'll iron from the lining first. Like I say, just make sure those bottom edges are parallel. And give that a, an iron. And I can see the top stitching on my lining on the other side that we just did and it looks really neat but if you were using a, a really contrasting thread and it wasn't neat I think it, I think it would irk you a little I'm not gonna say oh I didn't press the front it won't irritate you but it will mm, wish I'd done that differently or wish I'd used a different thread or something like that so it's something to consider it's not, it's not desperately important. Right, good. So, let's bring that in again. I'm being super cautious of my machine today because I've got a new cutting mat. So I'm trying to keep it clean because this machine leaves marks every time I move it. And you might have seen in previous videos really black marks on my mat and my table and it's from this machine and I should make little covers for the feet little like jam pot covers shouldn't I <laughs> that would be fun right to so top stitch that in place and doesn't it look gorgeous really neat so now we need to uh, trim our zip so make sure the slider is now inside and cut and we'll cut on this end as well and do you see how now that opens up at the end there yep so just take a moment and uh, I, in fact I'll change my foot over take a moment and join those ends together and we'll do the same when we do the bag it does make quite a difference to the neatness of everything so we just pop this on okay so all you're going to do is bring the two ends together as best you can 
and do a few stitches so it's really secure. I mean, to be honest, this is going to go in the side seam of your of your bag, but it's still a good practice. I'm going to use my pokey tool with a stiletto. So I've got a pokey wall tool one end and a stiletto the other. And I use my stiletto just to go in there and hold my pieces together so my fingers are out of the way. So I'm just pushing the zip teeth together. And then I'm just going to a few stitches to make sure that that doesn't move. And then that's joined the, you can see that's joined the end of the, the zip together. Let me just hold it so you can see. I'll put my finger in there, you can see. Okay, so now what we're going to do is join the, the bottom ends of the bag together, the, the zipper pocket. So what you're doing is bringing right sides together of your bag, outer, and right sides together of your lining. Make sure your zipper is open. I'm not sure if I did or I didn't. Let's just check and make sure. Just open that up. There we go. Make sure you don't go off the end. And all we're doing is stitching down the bottom two seams. So if I hold that properly, there we go. So our lining pieces are together this side and our outer pieces are together that side. And I'm stitching down this bottom edge. <laughs> I can't hold it properly for you. So we're not stitching the sides, we're only stitching that bottom edge there on both pieces, on the outer and the lining. So a quarter of inch seam allowance. Have you ever wondered what the Gold Club is all about? So many people message me, what is the Gold Club? Okay, simply it's my online sewing group, okay, mainly based on Facebook where we, we have a bit of a natter every day, we do Facebook lives and make all sorts of things. But if you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you'll see a join gold tab on the top there. And all that means is that you click on that yeah, and you buy it. So if for five pounds, which in dollars is about six dollars thirty, depending on exchange rates and times, um, you will get three patterns every month. I know it's mad. If you look at the price of my patterns in the shop, generally they're now four ninety nine. The value of the Gold Club online membership at this point in time is just five pounds a month. So you're getting the three free patterns every month and they're all made by me, designed for you. Easy, moderate, fairly difficult. Then we have the Facebook to back that up all as well, the Facebook group. So we have a wonderful time in there. We're all great friends. So if you want to join a great online sewing community, join Liz's Gold Club. The one, the outer one. So this is the lining. So you can see this zipper pocket, same as the other ones. So it's quite substantial because you've got the lining as well. So just make sure your all your fabric is together. Again, you can pin this. So that's our two ends stitch. So it's the, it's the bottom of the pocket that you're stitching, not the sides. And then you're just going to turn this through. So you've got, um, you, you've got a pocket, but the sides aren't stitched. Sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Kind of all works out in the end. I'm just going to turn that through. Now, ideally, you're going to press this now. Let's try and get that so it's sitting nicely. Because these bottom seams are obviously just freshly stitched and they're still a little bit sort of bulky, if you like. They need to be flattened down a little bit. So bring the bottom two seams together so they're sitting on top of each other. 
I can get hold of it. There we go. So there's our bottom seam and inside the lining is the same. I've got hold of both the lining and the outer um, and give that a press. And I'll just think I'll finger press for the time being just to save a little bit of time. OK, so that is actually our inner pocket made. So now we just need to attach it to one of the lining pieces, just one of the lining pieces. And I kept this one, didn't I, to one side. So if we have a look on the side camera, you can see that, there we go, there's the bottom of our bag there with the boxy bottom. There's the top of our pocket there. And this is, this is where we top stitched all the way around. And all we're going to do now is to stitch our zipper pocket to the side seams. OK, so we're literally just going to pop that over the top. And obviously you're going to press this because you can see it needs a press. It needs to fold. It needs to uh, lay flat, um, which it's fighting me at the moment because I haven't pressed it, but it, it will be fine. So what we're going to do and let me turn it so you can see that is that we're going to pop it down three inches from the top. So it's slightly further up than our pocket and we can measure that obviously and it just sits shy of the box bottom okay so if I hold that and hold that that's much better there we go so can you see how that looks so there's the pocket underneath and there is the zipped pocket we just made and you can see that it's just sitting proud of that um, box bottom there I suppose it's about a half an inch and this won't be caught in anything this will hang loose inside the bag but it's going to be caught on these side seams both sides okay so once you've measured we could do a little measure here so three inches just make sure it's clear of that box bottom you don't want you don't want to stitch it anywhere near that box bottom so if you have to adjust this, please do. So a few pins just to hold it in place. And just make sure your lining and your pocket are sitting nicely together. <clears throat> Pin it there and we'll put one in the centre. Make sure your layers are sitting nicely on top of each other. I think that's going to be fine. <laughs> What's to wriggle? There we go. So that's all our layers sat nicely, you can see. So we're going to stay stitch from there down to here. Same on the other side. So if we bring that around and see this, see this is the end where we stitched our zipper um, teeth together. So that's really helping us now because we don't have to think about keeping those teeth together. It, it just automatically wants to do that. Just make sure that's sitting nicely. Again, measure. Happy with that. Just wants to come over slightly. There we go. So just pin all those layers. And, and it, I'll be perfectly honest with you, a really good steam press of this pocket would make such a huge difference. So you do that, you do that. So again, just pin all those layers together. And I'm not a great pinner, but in this instance, I'm using the pins really to my advantage to hold all these layers together nicely. So there is that last little bit there. And you can see it's just about a half an inch from the boxy bottom there okay so as long as you leave a gap like that then it doesn't matter too much what's happening up here but you don't want that folded bottom edge or that stitch bottom edge to be anywhere near here because we're going to stitch that we don't want to we don't want to catch it in we want that to be loose we want that bottom to be hanging loose in the bag so we'll just space stay stitch these pieces in place. Don't 
don't sew over your pins, please. And go just beyond the zip. And then go down the other side. Let's take my pin out. I'll shift that a little bit. There we go. I'm happy. I'm happy now. Again, just start about a half an inch before you get to the zip and then start stitching. Okay, and even when we put this bag together, it still only is about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Um, like I said before, you could do more if you wanted to. Um, it, it, but it's, it's the whole thing is so well structured that I don't think you need to. But you might have a different opinion. So I'm just tidying my desk a little. And like I said, it could do with a good press. But that is our big pocket installed. So that's the big pocket with the zip going across. And underneath there you can see, look how gorgeous that looks. I do like the grey with the pink now, don't you? Um, so there's our lining pieces ready. So the other one is over here. So we'll get those together so we know where they are. Where we got? Put the bottoms together here. So, so before we stitch the main bag pieces together, so that's the lining and the outer pieces, we must make the straps. So I've cut my strap pieces out and I've stabilised them with a medium weight iron-on stabiliser. And it's the same process every, pretty much every time I make straps, that they are four inches wide. So you're going to... Fold them in half once you've stabilised them and iron them down the centre to get that central crease. That's the only reason why we do this part, is to get our guideline. And then once you've sort of ironed them in half, so you've got a crease, so you can see crease, those two outer long edges get ironed to the centre. Okay. Um, and then we fold again and that creates our one inch strap. Obviously, if you want a, a wider strap, then you obviously you're going to make this a, a slightly different uh, width. Um, so you can decide, but I, I find a one inch strap perfectly fine for, for most occasions. So let's just do those two edges. And then you top stitch down both sides of the long edges even though one side is a fold and looks beautiful it's nice to top stitch down both so just bring the two edges together give them a press and they may they might not want to stay together you can see mine are already moving apart but the thing is you've given your fabric kind of kind of muscle memory <laughs> you've told it where the creases are and it will naturally go there even though it just wants to spring apart. There's no need to, to press and, you know, really go crazy. So let's just get those together. And it gets super hot. Well, this iron gets hot and, on, and ironing onto a wool mat, it really is hot. Good job, really. So there we go, flip it around. Come up the other side and just put you're putting that long edge right to that central fold line you could leave a gap of a millimeter please don't measure it so once that's done fold it in half again give it a crease and i mean you want to be fairly careful with that that those two folded edges sit nicely on top of each other and you can adjust as you stitch but um, if you give it a press and do it nicely the first time, you shouldn't have too much of, uh, of a bother. Right, so I changed my thread to black. Uh, navy blue would have been better, but black was to hand. And now I'm going to stitch down both sides. Now this is where you can up your stitch length to three because it is a, just a top stitch. And it's uh, literally almost decorative. I mean, it is holding the layers together, but it's not going to take, it's not done to take any weight as such. Oh, cut my thread. Let's go back on myself. 
that's on my foot control so if you haven't got your foot control in the right place <laughs> it cuts you'd think I'd know by now so you could take that second piece in now and chain piece but I'll just go along the bottom and come back up and it's about an eighth of an inch top stitch no wider it, anything wider than that it, it can look a little bit clumsy a little bit ugly so try and keep it at an eighth of an inch if you can so now I'm just bringing my second piece on the table so down the bottom now these straps get put in at the same time of when we put in the zip so we need to put these onto the bag front and back now on the outer piece just to hold them in place, stay stitch based, whatever terminology you prefer. Um, and then we put the zip in and it holds it all in place. Oh, <laughs> oh my foot control completely turned itself around. <laughs> Crazy. Right. There we go. So we've got two straps made up there. Just got that little snip to get rid of there. That's where I cut my thread, I think. There, a few little loose ends. Good, good, good. So now what we can do is pop these, let's get our lining and our zip out of the way. Let's move that a little bit. So our straps. Um, so in the instructions, it tells you how much to measure in from each side. So I'll get my trusty tape measure in. Let's have a look. So you're going to measure in from the side. Do yourself a chalk line or a pen line. And the strap goes right in the centre of that line. It doesn't go to one side. It just goes into the centre. So I've made my mark there. So let's just take one of those and pop my strap into the center again make sure your strap isn't twisted so if i show you on the side view how that looks it's almost camouflage isn't it so underneath there let me show you there's my mark so my strap is going right over the top of that mark in the center there i pop my clip in place i'm going to stay stitch that in place so i'll do the other one I think uh, I'm really going to like this this bag. I think it's one of these bags that um, I'm going to find a lot of use for. Um, it might even be my sort of daily bag, even though it's, so it's quite big. Um, it's going to take like those odd bits of shopping that we might get and, uh, you know, bits and bobs when we're out and about. So again, strap it into the centre of the mark that you've made. Like I said, the, ma the measurements are all in the pattern, so you don't, don't have to worry. It's all done for you. So now I've clipped the handles in place. So I'm just going to stay stitch those because we don't want to be worrying about clips for the, the handles and clips for the zip and goodness knows what else. We just want to stitch. So I'll keep that black thread on for the moment. So that's one, and now we'll do the two. And so, so don't forget, if you want to add a pocket to this bag on the front, please do. Look amazing. I wanted it to be plain. I wanted it to be quite smart. And sometimes I think leaving pockets off, especially the outer, can make a bag look quite smart. So that there's our straps in place now. They're kind of camouflaged, aren't they? But you can see. 
So now what we've got to do is uh, put the zip in. So we're going to put the zip and the line in together at the same time. So don't forget, we're going to do right sides down onto the right side of our zip. So there's my, my zip there. Can you see the slider there? I've got the clip on the end so it doesn't come off. Um, and then I'm just going to put my outer fabric face down onto my zip and then get one of my lining pieces make sure that you've got the top and not the boxy bottom part have it right side up and we're going to just put that down on there so it's right sides together of our lining and our outer with the right side of the zip facing me it sounds it sounds complicated but it's not so because i'm being good because i know this fabric has is got a mind of its own I'm actually going to clip this together. Now, you won't find me doing this very often. But I think it's going to want to shift. Certainly when I made the original one, it still wanted to shift a little bit. And it's only natural because of all the layers. But I now know this fabric has a reputation. So I'm not, I'm not going to take any chances. I'll let you know what will happen. I'll end up moving the clips and it'll move anyway. But you could, you know what, you could actually hand tack this or hand baste this. I know it's a lot of work, but you could. Just to make sure that all of those pieces stay where they're supposed to be. <laughs> right, so we're going to change the thread and I'm going to change over to the zipper foot. So I've changed my thread back to cream. I could have kept, kept it to black, but I'm so used to working with cream, it's gone back to cream. I put my zipper foot on as well now. So we're going to stitch through all the, those three layers, see how we get on. And again, don't forget that zipper foot really will hug your zipper teeth. So you mustn't worry at all about that. So I'm going to keep my clips in and hope things don't wriggle see how we get on over this first part of the strap I know you're working blind here maybe that's why zip putting zippers in can be a little bit daunting but I promise if you've got everything lined up so your zipper tape and your raw edges they're all lined up you shouldn't have any problems at all so just move the lining a wee bit and I think it's paid off. Oops, just losing the other part of my lining there, slipping off the table. Perfect. Love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> so there's my lining. Let's see if I can hold it up. So there's my lining, my outer, my handles, everything attached. So now we have to do the other side. So we'll, we'll be really good again. Uh, I would actually really give this an excellent press, a really, because it's foam, you can cut the foam back to the barest of minimum, You can, but you can give it a good steam and it should absolutely hold that foam down. But please feel free, before we stitch the whole thing together, to trim all that foam back, okay? Um, I'll leave that for you to decide. I'll leave it exactly where it is for the moment. So I'm just flipping all my pieces together so my lining and my outer you can see are together which frees up the zip on that side now so what we're going to do is exactly what we did before don't forget it's the long edge that we're stitching not the boxy bottom part so I'm putting my lining face up right side up facing me I've got my zipper with the teeth facing me and I've got my outer facing down so I'm just going to get my clips in. That really worked a treat, didn't it? Quite happy with that. So just line everything up. Take your time. I mean, I'm doing this in real time, so you'll be doing the same. So you can uh, do the same as me. Just take that moment, paid off, didn't it? To stitch all these layers together. I mean, to clip them all together. Don't stitch yet. <laughs> so you've just got the lining edge the zipper tape edge 
the fabric for your outer with the foam the edges of that they're all sitting on top of each other beautifully <laughs> and I keep giggling because um, you think why didn't I do that before because we're busy we're busy 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 just make sure also that that lining fabric from the other side where the foam really wants to push it out just make sure it is out of the way so you don't catch it that, that'll be fine time I get to that end right so I'm happy with that so let's pop it under the uh, machine again and like I say this is really bulky because of the foam we're using so be aware that you're going to have to sort of fight a little bit with it and sort of tell it who's boss <laughs> is it, it, possibly this is why I don't like foam because it always wants to be the boss and you're dealing with lots of layers here I can't even think how many layers six layers plus the straps a lot going on so let's just make sure all of that stays out of the way take your time no rush so we're just getting to the straps now so over the top of the straps make sure that's all still lined up it's wriggled a little bit I must admit I might have to redo that little bit there we'll see see if I can live with it so make sure it's sitting because it's this is the second layer it's always going to be a little bit more fiddly than the first layer because you've got a lot, a lot of fabric going on here a lot of stuff Oops. so let's just manoeuvre that zip it wants to wriggle and I think it wants to wriggle because of the the other side is pushing because of that foam again it's pushing it so just be aware that might happen to you there's nothing you've done wrong it's because of all the layers that you're stitching together over the second part of the handle now and then we're coming zooming to the end that's it I just want to check that little bit where I thought I went the zipper decided to sort of move slightly so I'm going to check that because I want this this back to be really nice well let's get the gosh a lot going on now I don't know which side I'm looking at just want to check actually that's okay I was I was thinking it would had really moved but it hadn't so there we are so that's the outer can you see and the handles are not badly positioned I have to say if they're slightly out then you could undo all that and, and move them a little bit um, because they're so close together you know here you might notice if they're out a little bit more I mean they're not too bad they're not too bad I'm, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that so now of course what we need to do is trim the zip so I'm going to take my clip off the end I'm going to move it sideways and trim now again again what I want you to do with this is to stitch the ends of those zips so they stay the, t the teeth stay together move your slider in and snip there we go and I want you to put that under the machine and stitch those just a little just a few little stitches oops there we go and when we stitch the outer pieces together in a little moment there we are so I'm splitting the lining but I'm going to stitch just on the zipper teeth there uh, when yeah, when we stitch this bag together in a moment, I want you to put those zipper teeth to the to the outer bag. So when you come to stitch, sometimes the zipper teeth will go into the lining or into the outer or a bit of both. Just make sure 
both sets of zipper teeth are on the uh, outer piece of fabric. So again, I'm just securing the ends so they don't split open when I'm stitching. So now it's a case of right sides together and you're stitching all the way around, leaving a turning gap in the bottom of your lining. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a big old bag to try to manoeuvre. So if I can just show you, you're going to stitch the lining, but you're going to leave this bottom edge open and leave a good five or six inches open because it's a big bag. Don't forget to open your zip. Um, and then you're going to stitch these long sides and then you're going to stitch right down this side here. OK, so it's only the lining where you're going to leave that turning gap. Really, you're going to stitch all the way around. Apart from your boxy bottom, you're going to leave those for a moment. Um, so, yeah, so let's just make sure the zip is open before we go any further. Oh, one side. <laughs> there we go. Lovely. So we're going to start at the lining. Don't forget, you don't want to catch that, you know, the big inner pocket, the big zipper pocket. You don't want to catch any of that other than the sides. So oh, let's just change to our regular foot. If you can work with a quarter inch foot, it's really very useful. Um, it does uh, sort of stop all the guesswork or, you know, sort of bits of tape on your bed of your sewing machine to mark your quarter inch line. I mean, if you go over that quarter inch, it doesn't matter, but it's nice to have that facility to do that. So I'll just thread the needle again because it's decided to unthread itself. Okay, so let's get going. So I'm just stitching, uh, I don't know, about two inches on the bottom edge of my lining and up to the boxy corner. So I've just done that little bit there. Okay, so I'm going to skip the corner. So now I'm coming up the sides. And don't forget those zipper teeth. It's quite important because it makes the bag sit nicely in this instance. Normally I'll say it doesn't matter whether they go in or out, but it does, it does with this. So let's do our quarter inch. Um, if you want to do a, a slightly more uh, than a quarter of an inch, then I'll leave that to you, five eighths, something like that. So like I said, when you get to those teeth, just make sure that they're going in and not out. I think we've got it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Oh, this is why I don't like foam, because you're fighting with it the whole time. Let's get those edges lined up. Now we're coming over to the zip. I'm just making sure that they're sitting on top of each other nicely. Be careful when you go over the zip. It might need a little bit of persuasion. So carefully. Come down, sit back. And before we do the, um, well, before or after we do the boxy bottoms, just check all round your seams and make sure that you have caught all of your seams because you've got a lot of bolt going on here. Things could have slipped as they do. And sometimes that's why a slightly wider seam, like a 5 8 is probably better because you bound to catch the fabric. So across the bottom, up the sides now. Don't forget, check those zipper teeth. They want to be facing in.
and if they're not quite right undo it and do it again so down this lining side now and you're just doing oops three or four inches on that bottom lining. Got quite a big turning gap there. So a bit more. Okay, so I've left my gap there. It's not huge. Might have to undo a little bit of it. So yes, yeah, so I just check your seams, make sure you've caught everything. That's not too bad. I might just go over this little bit here because it looks like the foam moved a little bit. So now all you're going to do with your, your boxy bottoms is to pull out the, the corners here. So pull them out, flatten your seams together and stitch across. And you're going to do that on all four corners. Um, try and get that, certainly the outside ones, to, to sit nicely. And because it's already pre-cut, so you can either cut it before you know before you even start stitching or you can cut obviously before you put the whole bag together it doesn't matter when as long as you cut them at some point you I mean to be honest you don't have to cut them but if you've got each one of those cut at, at the uh, measurements given they're all going to be absolutely identical and you're not going to have to flatten them out and and measure and and draw a line which is what you would have to do And with foam it's not always easy so we're going to do the boxy bottoms on the lining be very cautious of your hanging zipped pocket that's inside make sure you're not catching that because it's close let's get that lined up again this is the last one now so pull open those points those corners get those seams nested together because it's your lining um, it's not so imperative that you get a gorgeous clean neat, neat nested seams but it really is on the outer right so let's do the big reveal <laughs> now like all projects it needs a really good press and until it has a press, it always looks a little bit puffy. So a lot of bag, a lot of foam to get through that gap. So take your time. Not sure I'm that happy with my zip. Might have to do that again. Oh, so we'll just pull that through. I don't think there's any easy way of doing this other than tugging and pulling. And you could go for the bottom corners and bring those through first. A lot of people will do that. Um, but it, you've got a lot of foam there. <laughs> so just take your time. A little bit at a time. Or you could make your turning gap a little bit bigger. And then we're done actually, just needs a good press. So. Oh, well, we've had the workout for the day. So there's our, you can see the lining. Let's turn it through to the right side. And uh, like everything else you make, it'll look gorgeous with a press. Oh dear. Get your hands in there and get those boxy bottoms pushed out. <laughs> oh dear. I actually I really like this. All these fabrics working together look amazing. All right, I'm going to put my hand through the turning gap at the bottom and I'm just going to push that boxy bottom out. There we go. 
There we go. It's, it's, it's better through the gap. Good. And then obviously bring your bag up. It's not too bad. I do like a perfect zip with these things though. And again, just get your turning tool and get that zip, those zip corners to, to really stand out and square it up, push them out. And again, you might want to trim the foam on in the seams back. It does make a difference. That's it, I've got it now. So, it really needs a press. So I'll do that and we'll post a picture, but for the time being, let's poke the lining in. Actually, it's, it's okay. And there is our bag made. Isn't that fabric glorious? I think this is the one I'm going to use this year, actually. I like both. Where's the other one? You can see the difference of a good press. How crispy that looks. This needs, you can tell, it needs an iron. And I love the fact we can see this feature zip here. And once it's been pressed, I've got a thread. <gasps> once it's been pressed, it'll lie nice and flat like this one. Does make a difference. But that is a Madalena. And of course, inside are all your pockets. So you've got a big zipper pocket. You've got a double pocket either side. You can decide whether you stitch down the middle and make into four pockets or a big one and two little ones. But there we are. Isn't that a lovely make? So don't forget to go to lizzycurtis.com and download the pattern and I hope you make loads. <laughs>